Hey what's up, time for another Photoshop editing video. On this image I want to apply a very dark look with a subtle blue color cast but mostly it will look almost black and white. Plus I do want to add a lot of contrast on this shot. So if you want to follow along, feel free to download the raw file, you can find the link in the description of the video and let's go. Okay, before we can head into Photoshop itself, let's do the raw adjustments in the camera raw editor. First off, I'd like to change the profile from Adobe Color to Adobe Standard. You can see this will lessen the contrast a little bit, just so I have more control over the contrast myself. Then let's expand the basic panel right away. I want to work on the white balance. Taking a look at the image right now, you can see the colors are pretty much neutral. However, I do want to make this look very cold, so I'm going to start by dropping the temperature. Just a bit. I only want to have a subtle blue color cast in here, so that's a good starting point. I'm not changing the tint, since I don't want to have any more green or magenta tones in here, so that's looking good. Then let's make the image darker, and of course the first thing I can do is to bring down the exposure. And while I'm doing this I'm always checking the histogram to not underexpose anything, because that would look strange. Then we can also drop the highlights. Besides the foreground, this will also affect the sky, which will lead to some more detail in here, so that's pretty cool. And then let's also slightly bring down the shadows. Just like that. And to reintroduce some contrast, I am going to increase the whites. So for the moment, I'm only going with a low value. I will introduce a lot more contrast using local adjustments, but for now let's continue in the basic panel. Actually there isn't much left to do, I do want to bring down the vibrance quite a bit, because as I said in the intro, this will almost look like a black and white image. I don't want to have much colors in here at all, so let's also bring down the saturation. Okay, perfect. But let's focus on the colors later. For now, let's check out the local adjustments. The most important thing for me on this image is the foreground, which I want to enhance now. For this reason, I'm using a radial gradient and I'm just dragging one up so it covers the whole foreground right here. In here, I do want to have some more brightness, so I'm going to bring back the exposure just like that. And I am also going to increase the whites all the way up. Now the highlights start to look a little strange, so I'm going to bring them down. I think that's a good point right there. And then let's introduce even more contrast by bringing down the shadows. Again, paying close attention to the histogram, but that's looking really, really good. All right, and then we can introduce a lot more texture because that works really good on those rocks and on those tiny waves in the foreground. And thus we're just getting a lot more detail in here. Okay, that looks really, really good. Usually I wouldn't go this high, but it just works that well on those rocks. At the same time, let's bring up the clarity a bit for even more detail. All right, enough for the foreground, let's work on the upper part a bit. First, I want to use a linear gradient. And I want to apply just above the water surface with a very sharp edge. Let's zoom in and make it even sharper. That looks pretty good. Now, on this part, I do want to bring down the blacks. And this way we get some more contrast and it just makes the mountains look way cooler. Also, I'm going to bring up the whites, which will just add more contrast in here. Let's increase it quite a bit. Perfect. So now we do have a little bit of overexposure, but I want to leave it at that point for now. Maybe we can change that later. Next up, I do want to make the top part of the sky a little darker, so let's use another linear gradient. I'm going to create a very soft gradient and I don't want to cover much of those mountains, but this should be fine. And now let's bring down the exposure, making the top part darker. All right, that looks awesome. Finally, I do want to work on the center as well. 
So in here I'm using another radial gradient just like this for those white waves in the very center. And in here I'm going to bring up the highlights all the way. Uh, maybe not all the way, but just like that. And let's also introduce a little bit of color by bringing down the temperature a notch. And again, I can use some texture and clarity to introduce details. Okay, and that's it for the local adjustments. Let's compare to the original RAW real quick. You can see we have a much darker image with a lot less colors. Overall, it just looks way better. But now let's take a look at the color grading. And in this case, I'm skipping over the curve. I'm skipping over the color mixer. I am heading straight into the color grading panel for the split toning. I'm starting with the shadows. And of course, for a dark, gloomy image like this, I'm going with the code tone for the shadows. So let's choose a blue hue and let's lightly bump up the saturation. I want to only use a very tiny amount, maybe something like this. And then let's head into the midtones. And again, we are going with the cold color tone in the blue range. And let's bring up the saturation. Again, just a little bit. So we can only make out a very, very subtle blue color cast. But that looks really, really good. Now we can also head into the calibration tab and play around with those sliders a little bit. In this case, I'm going to drop the red primary hue. I'm going to boost the green primary hue. And let's drop the blue primary hue. And here we could maybe push the saturation a little bit. But wow, that's looking pretty good. Again, let's compare to before. We now have reintroduced some more blue tones, but not too much, just a little bit to keep this dark look. So I'm really, really happy with this shot. Finally, let's head into the details tab to apply some sharpening. And as always, I'm dropping the radius all the way down, increase the detail all the way up. Then I'm applying some masking. So only the main points of the image are affected, just like that. And let's introduce some sharpening. Perfect. And that's it for the camera raw editor part. Let's open it up in Photoshop. So I'm not quite sure what I want to do exactly in here. However, I do think I want to make the mountains a little bigger. So let me just duplicate that layer by pressing Ctrl J. And on this layer, I'm going to edit. And here we choose Perspective Warp. With this tool active, we can create a grid just by dragging the mouse like this. And as I want to make the mountains bigger, I'm going to create a grid, especially for those mountains like this. And I'm making sure those points are snapping together. Then I'm making one for the center part. And of course, we want to have one bigger grid for the foreground. Then once the grid is done and make sure to cover the whole image, we are going to hit the warp button. Then I'm holding down the shift key to click on this line so I can drag around both of those points and I just want to drag them up slightly. All right, that's already enough. Let's apply it like that. And thus you can see we have nicely stretched those mountains without making it look strange. So next up I might apply some dodging. Therefore I'm creating a new layer. Let's switch the blending mode to overlay. And for the dodging part, I'm, I'm using the TK panel plugin. This allows me to create luminosity masks. And in this case, I want to target the brighter tones of the image. So let's go through the lights masks. Uh, let's try the lights to mask and use it as a layer mask on our overlay layer. Then I'm grabbing the brush tool by pressing B. Set the foreground color to white as I want to dodge the image. And you can see I already have a rather low opacity. Maybe let's increase it a bit. And then I'm just starting to paint over a few of those brighter areas. Okay, I think that's looking good. I also don't want to overdo it. So no more dodging for this shot. Actually, I think at this point I want to stop the whole editing process because I'm really, really satisfied with this image already. 
So if you have any questions, let me know in the comments and thank you very much for watching this video.